What's up with it, y'all? E-J-O, E-Business. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. All right, what's cracking? Kenya, what's up with it? If y'all watching, really, anybody who's watching, all right? So, what I'm doing right now is 10 facts about Kenya. So, I'm about to learn a little bit about Kenya right now, all right? So, before I... I don't know shit about Kenya. No, I don't know shit about it. Other than what I know now is Cali Graf Jones and Petra's from there in TNT. Man, they. Well, it's just because I just saw them on the cartel. But other than that, I don't know anything at all. Let's go, though. Somebody told me that there's 500 languages. I don't know. That sounds kind of ridiculous. I don't know. Let's go, though. All right. Here goes 10 surprising facts. It's not surprising to me because it's going to be all brand new. Let's get it. I don't know how to use on. Located on the east coast of the continent of Africa, Kenya is like a photographer's dream come true. Kenya contains iconic wildlife such as giraffes and zebras. In addition to these iconic species, there are over 100 types of mammals and thousands of- Pause! You know, um, a lot of people in America, you can ask a lot of people what they think about, um, about Africa. A lot of niggas about to say the zoo. Just say wildlife in the jungle. Yes. Because I asked some people, hey, what do you know about Africa? What do you think about it? That's like the first thing they say. I don't know. The the jungle? Like, you know, people say that. Because that's all motherfuckers be learning. Okay, anyways, let's go back. Birds in Kenya as well. There's just so much to see and explore in this diverse and magnificent country. Welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and more recently than not, a lot more viewers from Africa started tuning in. Ever since we did a video on Nigeria, and Dave also did a video on South Africa, a lot of you guys started watching, so welcome. And a bunch of you guys started saying, hey, you guys should do facts about Kenya. And by the way, if you haven't seen our videos on Nigeria and South Africa, I do recommend checking them out. I have the link to those down below. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that has been sharing our videos on your Facebook and other social ah, media. If you enjoy these videos, hit that, that like button and subscribe if this is your first time here. This is FTD Facts. We don't discriminate. So for this episode... I'm just playing. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I was so excited to dive into the culture of Kenya. So let's continue with the facts. The official name of Kenya is the Republic of Kenya. Kenya was named after Mount Kenya, which is a very significant landmark in the country. Mount Kenya is actually the highest mountain in Kenya and the second highest mountain in Africa. Now the origin of the name Kenya itself is not as clear. It's believed that the name Kenya is linked to the Kikuyu, the Embu, and the Kamba words Karinyaga, Kirenya, and Kinya. And those three words all mean God's resting place. And since we're just talking about mountains actually, let me know down in the comments section, where is the highest place that you have ever been to on this planet? It could be up in a roller coaster, it could be another mountain that you climbed, but don't say airplanes because I don't think those count. Now did you know that the country Kenya lies is directly at the equator like literally if you take a look at the map you'll see the equator running straight through the middle of Kenya. Kenya has a total population of 48.2 million people and 3.5 of those people live in the country's capital Nairobi. On top of being the capital city Nairobi is a large are you serious commercial 
largest city in Kenya, and it's famous for having the world's only game reserve located in a major city. And that game reserve is the Nairobi National Park. And as you could imagine, having this sort of park located in a metropolis with animals like hyenas, cheetahs, and lions, there is some risk to the residents there. In the past, some of the lions have been shot and killed to protect the public. Because of this, lions are being fitted with tracking collars so that the park rangers can always know where they are. They hope that this will prevent any lions from crossing the borders of the park and into civilian territory. Now let's take a closer look into the history of Kenya. Many Kenyans were made to disperse throughout the world as slaves. This was done by Arabs, Europeans, and Americans during the 1600s and 1700s. Kenya's location in relation to the Arabian Peninsula invited this type of trade. And so the East African Swahili coast where Kenya is located was a very advanced and rich area. But because of the heavy trading by the Indian... The Pause it. Do you know whenever I think about slaves from Africa, before I started looking into stuff, I just thought slaves just came straight to America. I didn't think about it going to Europe and all over. I just didn't think about it. Why? Because we weren't taught that. We were only taught about America. So obviously, I'm just going to think that's where they're coming from. All right. I know you didn't ask, but guess what? I just wanted to tell you. All right. Trading by the Indian, Persian, the Arabs, Indonesian, Malaysian, as well as some African and Chinese merchants, they all impacted the creation of the Swahili culture and language in that area. Arabic was the strongest language influence, and we can see the effect of the Arabic influence even in the name Swahili. The name Swahili is derived from the Arabic word Sawahil, meaning coasts. More specifically, the Swahili coast mainly consists of the areas along the shores of Kenya, Tanzania, and northern Mozambique. Also, some of the Indian Ocean islands, such as Zanzibar and Comoros, they can also be included in the term Swahili coast. Now, when the British Empire eventually dominated that area, they established what was called the East African Procurate in 1895. And from 1920 onward, it was known as the Kenya Colony. That lasted until Kenya gained its independence in 1963. That was when the colony came to an end when a black majority government was elected for the first time and eventually declared Kenya's independence. Since then, Kenya has grown in population and reputation, and Kenya is also home to many notable figures. Barack Obama Sr., the father of former U.S. President Barack Obama, was born in Kenya. As well as, did you know that Richard Dawkins, the famous UK biologist, was born in Kenya? He rose to fame for his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene. As well as, he was the person that coined the term meme. And many of you probably recognize this guy, David Rudisha. He's a 2012 and 2016 Olympic champion, world champion, and the world record holder in the 800 meters. And here we have the fashion model, Malaika Firth. She began her modeling career at the age of 7. 17 years old. She first gained attention by being the first black model in almost 20 years to appear in a Prada advertisement after Naomi Campbell. In terms of the ethnic groups in Kenya, it's reported that there are over 70 ethnic groups. And within those ethnic groups, over 30 different languages and dialects are spoken. And Swahili and English are the official languages of Kenya. The biggest ethnic group in Kenya is the Kikuyu. But despite having so many different ethnic groups, these tribes can be split into three main categories categories, the Bantu, the Nilotic, and the Kushites. Now, when you move to the southwestern part of the country, you'll notice Oh my gosh, commercial, commercial. A pretty big lake, that's Lake Victoria, and it was named after Queen Victoria, of course. Lake Victoria is the world's second largest freshwater lake. Now the explorer who gave it the name Lake Victoria was John Hanning Speak, and this was during an 1858 expedition to find the source of the Nile River. The Nile River, of course, is a river that is regarded by most people as being the longest river on the planet. Now, when it comes to food, the staple meal in Kenya is ugali. Like, mm, it looks so good. Like, I want some right now. This is a meal made from several types of flour, including cornmeal. It's also normally accompanied by stew, and it's enjoyed at weddings as well. For any Kenyans watching, let me know down below, what would you rate ugali on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 being not so good, 
10 being such a good tasting food. As we're coming down to the end of this video, I just want to touch on the fashion real quick. It's a part of what makes Kenyans so unique. Although it is very common to find Kenyans wearing clothes of the Western world, their own style of dressing in itself is very distinct. When you visit the country of Kenya, you can't help but notice the red, pink, and maroon piece cloths that are commonly referred to as Maasai Shuka around the people's shoulders, waists, and necks. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this brief journey through Kenya. Now before you go, if you do love what we do here on FTD Facts and want to further Hello. I don't know why I just said hello. Anyways, let me know how you guys feel about that, alright? Um, I didn't know about any of that, about the colors. Um, is it common that, um, is it pretty popular that there's a lot of women over there that have short hair? I'm curious about that. But, um, the food looked different. It looked like cornbread at first to me, right when I first saw it. But, um, yeah. So let me know, man, if you're in Kenya and you're just seeing this, what's up? I'm um, happy I was able to watch this. No matter what, I am happy that I was able to watch this because, you know, I learned a little bit about a country that obviously I didn't know about. All right. So we up out of here, though, y'all. Y'all already know what it is. All right.